My name is Martin Blake. I'm the guy. I mean, I'm the guy everybody hates. Right now, I'm at the Central District Police Station waiting for my favorite detective, Carla Ramos, to come and take my statement. Carla and I go way back. I mean, I've dealt with Detective Ramos several times before. She knows who I am, and we kind of have an understanding. So who am I? I'm an unmarried, middle-aged guy who's sexually active and not ashamed of it. I'm good-looking and in great physical shape. I wear only the most stylish and expensive clothes. I have a great job, drive an expensive car, and don't need money. I love sex and am very good at it. What's the problem, you ask? Well, probably the fact that I will only have sex with married women. Not just married women, but those who meet my standards. Most single women are looking for some kind of commitment which I'm not willing to give. I'm not interested in a steady, regular partner. I definitely don't want a wife or family. Single women are usually, but not always, looking for something. Married women, on the other hand, are a little different. Yes, they are looking for something, but it usually doesn't involve any kind of commitment. They want a little thrill in their boring lives. They crave for affection or love that they can't get at home. They want to experience something unpleasant for a change. They are bored out of their minds or they are tired of being ignored. I could go on and on, but you get the point. The main point is that they don't need me. They just want to use me, and I'm letting them. Of course, I don't understand why people hate me. I guess I'm trying to rationalize my actions. I don't go after married women. I don't harass women at all. I'm friendly and congenial. I try not to be nasty, rude, or impolite unless required. I have never blackmailed, threatened, or set women up for sex. I have never schemed or manipulated a woman to get her into bed. The police station is always crowded at this time of day. Yes, I've been here before. After what seemed like an hour, but was actually much less, Detective Ramos made me happy with her appearance. What's going on, Martin? Have you been attacked by some angry husband again? She sank into a chair and tasted coffee from her coffee maker. No, it's more serious than that. At least for me, I think I need your help. Have you stopped by the medical center? Damn it, Carla. Get serious for a minute. I don't want to get in trouble, and you're the only one who can help me. What the hell do you mean by railroading? Tonight I spent some time with a married lady who called herself Wanda. I have no idea what her last name was. Everything seemed fine for the first two hours, and then it all went to hell. We were getting ready to leave the room when I noticed she had taken a pill from a small bottle and swallowed it. I jokingly asked her if it was the morning after pill. She giggled and replied, No, silly, it's ecstasy. And, well, I admit, Martin, this is getting a bit interesting. Carry on. I asked her why she was taking it now and not before, and she said she wanted to enjoy sex without being stupefied. I threw her a confused look. She sat down and explained to me that she was going to wait a half hour or so and then go to the city hospital and claim that she had been drugged and raped. That way, her husband wouldn't be able to accuse her of cheating and would comfort her instead of criticizing her. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Did she mean it? As far as I can tell, I told her I could get arrested for rape and she just laughed. She said she didn't even know my name so no one would ever know. Martin, I thought you only picked up the smart ones. Me neither. Hell, she wasn't even blonde. You're in the database, aren't you? Yes. With a hobby like mine, there's no way I can avoid it. I see your problem. We'll have a rape report in a couple hours, and DNA identifies the rapist as Marin Blank, Esquire. Can you help me? I thought you were smart enough to protect yourself from something like this. Yeah, sort of. And what does that mean? I pulled out my Android tablet and placed it on the table with a mischievous grin on my face. Damn it, Martin! You're taping your episodes with these women? That seems a little perverted, even for you. I'm not doing it for sex. Do you have any idea how easy it is to blackmail and shake down some of these proper housewives? I only do it to cover my ass like I did today. Do you want to see that or not? Okay, can you rewind the sex scenes and watch to the end? Sure. All was quiet for a few minutes while Carla watched the fiasco. Okay, Martin, you win. I'll make a quick copy and then you can go. I have all the information you need. I had a cup of machine coffee, and five minutes later she was back. I signed some papers and got my clipboard back. 
Before I left, I looked over my shoulder and said, you're not going to watch this, are you? I think I saw her stick her tongue out and smirk. True to her word, Detective Ramos was able to take care of almost everything. True, I had to come down to the station to make a few statements and sign a few more forms. But that was the end of it. While I was there, I happened to see Wanda and a man who I assumed was her husband. Things didn't seem to be going well for her. I kept to the side so she wouldn't notice me. Before I left, Carla looked at me a little oddly. You watch the video, right? I swear she blushed slightly. Well, at least now I know what the attraction is. I think she smiled. It was business as usual for a few months, and then I ran into another problem. She was attractive, though a little overweight, and seemed perfectly normal until we got to the room. We never got anything sexual going. She cried when she started to undress, and I ended up just sitting there and holding her. Over the next two hours, the situation seemed to worsen. She hadn't had much to drink, and as far as I knew, there were no drugs involved. My normal daytime experience usually consisted of quick, comfortable, willing sex. This one I wasn't ready for. I kept hearing mumbling in the phone that meant absolutely nothing to me. In desperation, I called Carla. Twenty minutes later, there was a knock on the door. Are you Martin? I only nodded affirmatively. Detective Ramos said you needed help. I'm Sarah Phillips from the Suicide Prevention Unit. Would you like to tell me about what's going on? It was obvious that Sarah Phillips knew what she was doing, and within ten minutes she had me quietly leaving, having first instructed me to go into the station and fill out some forms. I couldn't figure out if I had done the right thing by this woman, or if by taking her away I had made her problem worse. I wanted her to get better, not worse. Seducing unhappy women was becoming a dull hobby. Every once in a while I'd stop by the pickle bar for a drink. The pickle bar was a local police establishment. It was where they met after work and on special occasions. To all the cops, I was a criminal, and they jokingly treated me like one. It was good-natured fun. It was late on a Friday night when Freddy, the bartender at Pecools, called me on my cell phone. This had never happened before. Martin, it's Freddy from the pickle. I need your help. How can I help you? You must have 20 police officers out there right now. This is Detective Ramos. She's a wreck, completely out of it. She's in the back room right now. She doesn't want any of the guys to see her. She asked me to call you. For what? She wants you to come get her. She's embarrassed, I think. If you park in the alley, we can pick her up out the back door. An hour later, Carla Ramos was already asleep in my bed. For the first time in my life, I had brought a woman into my apartment. Women were hotel rooms, but my apartment was myself. I slept on the couch. The next morning, when she finally woke up, I already had cakes and coffee ready. She was quiet for the first half hour. I need a shower. Thirty minutes later, she was at her best. She looked good in my old sweatpants, but I didn't have a hairdryer for her. She toweled them dry as best she could. I just sat there and watched her. My husband served me with divorce papers. His 22-year-old secretary is pregnant. Do you need a place to stay? No, he's moved out. The rent is a little high, so I'll probably have to find another place to live. I've got enough for now, but thanks for the offer. Winter was fast approaching. I no longer traveled as often as I used to. I guess I was tired of the game, but it was a habit hard to give up. I was leaving the Mayflower Hotel with my latest hot wife, and there was a three-inch layer of snow on the ground. My Lexus was parked a hundred feet away from me. I pulled out my key fob and pressed the remote start button from the hotel entrance. The explosion was deafening. My beautiful white Lexus was practically gone, and the cars on either side were engulfed in flames. Being a gentleman, I called an Uber for my friend and then called Carla. For some reason, I wanted her to know. She was there 30 minutes later. All that was left by then were two burned-out cars and a hole where the Lexus had been. She gave me a ride home, but I didn't get much sympathy from her. In her opinion, it was what I should have expected. I asked her to stay the night, but she only laughed. I decided not to change the Lexus. For the next couple months, I used Ubers. I got used to them, and pretty soon it started to feel completely natural. My hunting trips were now about half of what they used to be. Sometimes in the evenings, I found myself at the pickle bar with Carla. Once in a while, we would go out to eat. Gradually, we found that we went out to eat more often than we went out to drink. 
we still didn't sleep together. When Carla wasn't free, I still walked the streets looking for desperate housewives. It was late on Friday, and I had just walked out of a satisfied client at the Mayflower. She wanted to stay and shower, so I said goodbye to her. My Uber was just pulling up when I was suddenly hit from behind. It hurt like hell, and I ended up on the ground looking at a big guy wearing a baklava and holding a baseball bat. I took about three more hard hits before I heard a loud screech, similar to the sound of a siren. The attacker quickly left, and the Uber driver was standing over me, holding a phone in one hand and an alarm in the other. I don't know how I made it to the hospital. The first thing I noticed was Carla sitting in the chair across from my bed. How did she know? I knew I would end up getting the old lecture from her about my crush. I ended up with two cracked ribs and a lot of bruises on my arms and legs. Thankfully, none of the blows hit my head or gonads. It's probably a good thing the Uber driver reacted the way he did. I was still able to walk, feed myself, and go to the bathroom. I was only held for three days. Carla lived in the apartment with me for a couple days, but there was still no sex. I was quickly losing interest in the poor housewives. I was beginning to think it was more trouble than it was worth. I needed a hobby. I got on the internet and started looking for something, anything. I was even getting bored at work. I invested my money wisely and didn't spend it on stupid things. I had enough to live on. So I stopped looking for unhappy wives, and it all went to shit anyway. I got a call from the city hospital. Carla had been shot four times and was in intensive care. I got two calls once from the police station and once from the hospital. Carla had listed me as her emergency contact. I didn't know that. Carla was leading a task force that had busted several local prostitution rings in the city. One of the main perpetrators held her personally responsible for his arrest and decided that revenge was necessary. He shot her four times at point-blank range before her partner could take him down. She was not wearing body armor. Since she had enlisted me as her primary contact, I had no problem staying with her. For the first few days, she was not herself. Once the effects of the drugs wore off, she became much more responsive. It seemed like we were constantly nitpicking each other about who had the worst situation, her with her job or me with my hobbies. It was never resolved. She spent two weeks in the hospital, and after that, she spent two weeks in my apartment. While she was there, I took it upon myself to move all of her belongings from her apartment to mine. I didn't ask for it. She didn't complain. She got a medal and the opportunity to retire on disability if she wanted to. No, I was not roasted at the stake as many of you wanted. I did, however, give up all desire to seek out married women. That was in a past life. Now I sit on the porch of my villa in Porto, Portugal. It was her idea not mine. I wanted to go to Panama, but Carla decided. I promised to protect her from a bullet, and she promised to keep me away from married women. Actually, she said, all women married or not. We're both addicted to rose wine. This is a good place for it. The funny thing is, Carla speaks Spanish, and we ended up in Portugal. Guess what? Not everyone hates me.